Trigger Spoons, Trigger Spoon Magnums, Trigger Spoon Pros, Trigger Spoon Juniors, Speed Spoons, Speed Spoon Pros. Looking for spoons for your trout fishing adventure? Think FHS Spoons. You can check them out at fishhuntshoot.com. Hey guys, Cal Kellogg here. It is a chilly morning out in the Sierra foothills and I have a viewer question today from Big Tony D down in Benicia, California. I spent a lot of time out in the charter boats with Tony Chase and Halibut and Lincoln and stuff like that, but he shot me out a trout fishing question. He heard me use the term on the channel, taking the trout's temperature, and he wants me to elaborate on that. So, and it's pretty simple, Tony. You need to go to like a feed store somewhere that sells animal supplies, and you need to get one of those really, really rigid, really big thermometers. You need to get some lubricant. Well lubricate that thermometer and take a trout and we'll put the trout on his back. You want to take that thermometer and I'm kidding. <laughs> no trout is going to stand for that. When I'm talking about taking a trout's temperature, I'm talking about kind of evaluating a trout's mindset or evaluating their reactions. Just trying to make some assessments on the water about the condition of the trout in general. And sometimes it's super obvious. We went trolling, we trolled for six hours, we tried everything in the tackle box, we never got a bite and it was a horrible day. Worst day we ever had. Well, we took their temperature and they're not biting. We know that. Um, uh, an another another uh, form of that, and it's more positive, we hit the lake and we put on Rapalas and we started trolling three miles an hour and we caught seven fish in the first 30 minutes. Well, we took their temperature. We know a lot of things. They're hungry. They're chasing. They're aggressive. And we had a great time because we had a great, a great day, okay? But usually, it's much more subtle than that. Um, the first form of taking the trout's temperature is finding fish with your sonar that you're convinced are trout. Once you find some marks that you're pretty sure are trout, you know, I, I hit them with my basic philosophy of start out fast and then gradually slow down until I get hit. If the lake has a, a bait fish economy, meaning if the, the fish, you know, earn their living by feeding on threadfin shad or pond smelt, I typically go with bait fish imitations, stuff that, that very much mimics those types of bait fish. And then if they're not hitting those, as I start to slow down, I start to incorporate the bright, you know, pinks and oranges, chartreuse lures, stuff like that. That's my philosophy. And that's kind of how I start to take the temperature of fish that I'm not necessarily catching, but that I'm marking. Once you start getting hit, you can make some very valuable assessments. Um, if you're getting a lot of bumps, but you're not hooking fish, well, you, you, you know probably one of two things. Your lure is either too big for the fish that are hitting, or you're going too fast. So, downsize and slow down. That's going to solve that problem most of the time. Um, if you're trolling a fly, you might want to add a stinger hook to it to get those fish that are coming in and are nipping at the, at the tail of the lure and they're, they're just, you know, they're just not getting hooked. If you add a stinger on there, sometimes you'll start picking up hooked fish. Now, hooked fish, whether you lose them or net them, you can make evaluations, you know, about those fish. And it, it also kind of gives you, you know, clues to their temperament the same way that missed strikes do. If you're catching fish and they got that lure back in their mouth and they're hooked well, you're pretty dialed in. You know what they want. They're taking the lure. They're taking it with confidence. If you're out there and you're losing fish and the fish that you're landing, they're just barely hooked, again, they're not really going after it. They're flashing on it. A lot of times if you're hooking fish outside the mouth, they're not really hitting it. They're kind of, they're curious and they're flashing on it and they're picking up a hook by accident. Again, usually the, the cure to that solution is slowing down and downsizing. That, that relationship right there will solve a lot of problems out on the water when the fishing's not wide open, when the fish are playing hard to get. Start slowing down, start downsizing, and you know, way down here at the, at the bottom of the repertoire is slow down a bunch and incorporate that natural bait, usually a threaded worm maybe a rigged bait fish, depending on where you're at. Get down in that one to one and a half mile an hour range, roll that natural bait, and uh, very often that, that will get you fish when they're, they're virtually shut down um, and, and it can save your day. But anyway, 
that's how I take the temperature of trout. You always want to be, you know, aware of all the details when you're out fishing. Observe everything and every piece of information that you can, can garner helps you put the puzzle together. Think like a cop. Think like a detective. Think like Sherlock Holmes. Put the pieces of the puzzle together and it starts to draw a picture. You're lightly hooking fish, you're getting bumps, you're losing fish. They're not getting that lure in their mouth for some reason. Slow down. Go with smaller stuff. Maybe go with natural baits and uh, you are going to maximize your time on the water. Remember, it's about 15% of the time when the bites shut down, you're not going to catch fish. There's another 15% of the time when it's wide open, everybody's going to catch fish. It's that middle ground when it pays to really pay attention to details and tweak your approach based on the temperature of the trout. I'm Kel Kellogg. I'm signing off. Here comes a car, it sounds like. If you're looking for trout gear, um, we don't have trout thermometers, so don't look for those. But if you're looking for rods and spoons, flies and stuff like that, you know where to go. Fish Hunt Shoot. Com. I'm signing off. I'll catch you next time right back here on YouTube. I'm Kel Kellogg, guys. Thanks for all the support. Look at that stud of a rainbow. Wow. What a beautiful fish. Incredible. He's heavy. <laughs> Super heavy. Wow. Very nice.